Okay, welcome back. So you guys just took your um, opportunity to work on implementing t-tests in Excel like we showed you in the previous video. And so the last thing to kind of wrap up this week uh, as far as teaching you new skills is how to do the exact same thing, but in R this time. And so here I have the R Studio, uh, the web-based version of it that we provide you through this course opened up, uh, same one you were using earlier. Um, and we're going to go ahead and very briefly show you how to implement a t-test in R. And so, just like last time, we're going to click File and make a new R script for us to work in. Again, this is really a nice way to work in R as, so that as you're typing things um, and executing them and making mistakes and fixing them, there's kind of a nice uh, record of what you've typed that you can go back and edit or rerun or just start fresh. So again, I recommend everybody kind of work in this framework. Okay, so we're going to be continuing to work with that car data set. Remember, that's located within, from our home directory, within the week three, within the week three folder, and it's a CSV file called empty cars. And so um, to get that into our R, to read it in or open that file, um, we are going to save that uh, file as an object named data. And so remember to save objects, we use that arrow. Uh, pointing from a function, so function over here, um, to whatever we want that function to really kind of dump everything into that new object name, so data. And again, this is a little bit of review from the previous thing you did, but uh, more is never bad. So we're going to use the function read CSV because we want to read in a CSV file. That CSV file um, is not located within R currently. It's actually in a directory that uh, R is looking through. And so because of that, we're going to be using quotes uh, because R doesn't quite actually have a hold of this thing. It's not an object yet. Uh, and so we use quotes when we're in those situations. And so it's within the week three folder. Uh, and then we'll use comma, I mean a, a, a forward slash to indicate that within that folder, within that folder, it is the mtcars.csv. And we will go ahead and use command return or if you're on Windows, I believe it's uh, Control R to execute that. And so here you can see that data was executed, uh, or, or read CSV was executed and saved as the object data. And we can also see data here. It's 32 observations of 12 variables. Again, you're probably very familiar with this data set at that point. Even though we're familiar with it and we're confident that it probably read in well, I always like to double check, make sure, hey, did I read in what I thought I did? So let's use. Um, let's use that function head. Again, head lets you look at the first couple lines of something. And so we'll head data. And we'll go ahead and execute that. And here you can see our data set. And so everything looks good. And so let's uh, make a comment to ourselves so we know what our goal is today. Uh, we want to run a t-test on, let's keep it similar to what we've been doing uh, previously, uh, horsepower between uh, automatic and manual transmissions. And then we'll put some scripts in here. And then maybe when we're done with that, we will look at um, t-test of miles per gallon between auto and manual transmissions, just so we can see what's going on differently. OK, so um, some of this we kind of already did. Uh, but it was probably one of the more complicated parts of what we did in R. And so just a refresher, we have uh, our object data. And if we want to look at individual columns, we can use that dollar sign. And here we can see the columns. If we're interested in horsepower, it would be data dollar sign horsepower. If we were to execute that, here are all the horsepowers within that column. If we want to uh, perhaps further subset that, um, we can say, okay, we want the data uh, horsepower column, but we want to subset it to only the horsepowers where the transmission uh, is manual or where the AM column equals zero. So we can open up a set of brackets and say, okay, we only want this one where the AM column entry for any given row uh, is equal to zero. And so now if we execute this, we've subsetted the horsepower uh, to only the horsepowers where that transmission is manual. 
And so we could save this as an object if we wanted. We could say uh, manual horsepower and execute that. So now we've got that saved as a object. So we don't have to constantly go back and retype that longer line. We've got a shorthand now for it. We could then also get the automatic. This is again kind of using a little copy paste to kind of make things quicker and easier. Um, if this is for manual transmissions, well, all we have to do is change this to a yes or a one for automatic transmission. So now we've got um, an object for the automatic transmission as well, or the horsepower value of those. Okay, so we're kind of set up now to kind of do some t-testing on, on these things. So um, just so we can visualize what's going on before I do the t-test, again, we're gonna cover box plots and visualization next week, but it never hurts to kind of uh, just look at these things really quickly um, and compare them. So to run a box plot, you're going to use the function box plot, and there's a couple different ways that you can do it. Um, you could do uh, man horsepower and auto horsepower and execute that and go ahead and get your box plot. So we've just given it one list and another list. It's going to assume that the units and the values and everything are the same between those lists. It's up to you to make sure that you're asking it to do things that are comparable. Um, and so we can look at this and go, hmm, these look kind of different, but are they significantly different? And this is where the t-test comes in. And so in R, a t-test is actually going to be pretty much this same format. We can go t.test as our function. And within this, it's going to want um, our manual horsepower. So we're going to compare manual horsepower, comma, to our automatic horsepower. Okay? And if we execute this, we get a nice little readout for our two-sample t-test. Again, you can modify this and put more things into it if you want to tell it to do a paired t-test or if you want to tell it to do a one-tailed versus two-tailed. But again, we're not getting into all of that nitty-gritty right away right now. And so let's look at what's actually kind of the biggest takeaway from this big output. Well, what's nice is we get a little summary of kind of some of the relevant statistics, as, uh, summary statistics as well. Uh, at the very bottom here, we get the mean of X and Y. So our X is going to be the first uh, list that we gave it, and Y is the second list. So here's the mean of the manual horsepower for you and the mean of the automatic horsepower. It's also going to give us some of our T statistics and stuff, um, but it's also going to give us our p-value right here. And so what this is doing is uh, telling us, again, as a refresher, that there is a 22% chance that if we were to conclude that manual versus automatic transmission significantly impacts the horsepower of a vehicle, there'd be a 22% chance that we would be wrong just based on random sampling of cars that we're looking at in today's data set. And so typically we're not okay with, uh, with taking that high of a risk. We, in science, we tend to stay within uh, something below a 5% risk or a 0.05 p-value. Um, and again, it's also not having any bearing on the magnitude of difference. Just because you have a really, really small p-value does not mean that there's a twice as big difference in horsepower. That's they're kind of two different things that you're looking at. So this is kind of how we would conduct a t-test in R. Similar to Excel, there's a little bit of kind of prep. Uh, in Excel, you're kind of moving some columns and getting columns put together. Here in R, you're just kind of setting up some nice um, objects that are easy to work with to feed into your box plot or feed into your t-test. That's one way to do the t-test. Now, I want to show you, because everybody likes to do things slightly differently, there are two other ways that you could run your t-test, two other ways that it would accept the same information for this same comparison. Um, the first is if you don't want to fool around with making these objects here. Go straight from your data set. Uh, then what you can do is go t.test, and instead of feeding it man horsepower or auto horsepower, we can actually uh, use uh, this that little shorthand a tilde, that little squiggle line, to kind of tell it that we want to compare two things. 
And so what we can do is we can say, hey, we're interested mostly in the horsepower of the data set, but we want to split up the horsepower or compare it across. And that's what that squiggle line is basically telling us. It's kind of like a formula. We want to compare it across the transmission value or the automatic versus manual column. So saying that we want to compare uh, horsepower across the automatic versus manual transmission column is the exact same thing as if we pulled them apart by hand and then fed it into t-test uh, as well. So here, this is just kind of R being a little fancier and a little uh, more straightforward, uh, a little um, uh, fewer steps. So if we go ahead and execute that, we're going to see the exact same thing. You can do this either way. If you look at doing it this way, where you make your own objects, similar to how you make separate columns in Excel and do your t-test this way, that is absolutely right. Plenty of people do it that way. Plenty of other people do it this way too. If this makes sense to you, you're more than welcome to do it this way. There's one other slight variation on that. You could do t.test and you could say, hey, I don't want to type data twice like I did here, data and horsepower, data and automatic transmission type. Um, you could just say, hey, I'm interested in horsepower across the transmission type. And then you could use a comma and say within the object data. And so this is going to do the exact same thing as well. Some people like to do it this way. You might be thinking to yourself, how do I know what I can and can't do? So I haven't shown you this before, but probably the most helpful function in R is the function help. If you say help and you give it the name of any function, whether it's t-test or summary or mean, anything, and you execute that, it will pull up the manual for that function. And so here, um, you can get kind of in the weeds a little bit on this, but here it's going to show you the basic format of a t-test, as well as what its defaults are for any uh, given uh, extra piece of information you might give it. So the default function for t-test is t-test, and the first thing it expects is x. So if we go back to the first time we ran it here, we gave man horsepower as the x value. We gave auto horsepower as the y value. It's going to default um, to a two-sided uh, t-test, but if you wanted to change it, you could type in here um, alternative equals, and then you could put in two-sided or less than or greater than if you wanted to do a one-sided. And you can kind of read more about each of those individual separate pieces you can add in there. So alternative, here you can see what the default is. It's the two-sided t-test. Um, and you could read more and more about how to implement uh, a t-test. You can also see some nice short examples too if you ever forget how to use it. So if you learn nothing else, it's remember to use the help function if you get confused. All right. There is one more thing I want to show you. I think I, I kind of continue to say that, um, so I apologize. But recall that a t-test is only for comparing something where you have basically two columns or um, values for uh, a treatment and a control uh, that is binary, like transmission type. There's not, Binary meaning it's either or. There's not three different types of transmission or four different types of transmission. What happens if we try to run a t-test where there's more than two options? Um, cylinders is a good example of this. The number of cylinders in a car in this data set can be four, six, or eight. So there are three different categorical variables uh, that uh, miles per gallon or horsepower can belong to within the cylinder variable. So um, let's just see what happens if we go ahead and go uh, t-test and we want to compare miles per gallon across the variable cylinder. Do you think it's going to give us an output? Nope, R got mad. And that's because the grouping factor or the, the variable that we're interested in, which is number of cylinders, must have exactly two levels. It's, it's got to be like a one or a zero or a yes or a no or ate cereal for breakfast, didn't eat cereal for breakfast. 
Um, and so you can't do a t-test if there's three different columns for something. Um, this is more appropriate for an ANOVA, which you'll learn about in two weeks from now. So what if we really wanted to t-test some of these cylinder data? Well, now your options of how to implement the t-test are a little more limited because now you actually do kind of need to do some subsetting. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and compare uh, the data for miles per gallon. So let's make a, com a, a comment. Let's compare miles per gallon in four versus six cylinder cars. And this will just be kind of the last example I show you. And so what we want to do is we can either make ourselves some new objects. So um, four sil MPG. And we'll say that that would be uh, the data of miles per gallon subsetted where the data cylinders are equal to four. Okay, and if you want to make sure that that did what you thought, you could execute that by itself. And there's our list of miles per gallon for four cylinder cars. And so we'll go ahead and do the same thing for six cylinder cars. Oops, here's a very common mistake. I hit enter uh, and overwrote the variable name. So now this actually four cylinder MPG is representative of the six cylinder uh, data set. So I'm going to go ahead and change that, and I'm going to re-execute both of these. Okay, so now we've kind of cut out the eight-cylinder cars, and so now we're down to something that we can actually t-test. We can compare between the four- and six-cylinder cars. And so now we can just go t.test, and we can uh, go uh, four-sil versus six, six-sil and execute that. And there is a very small p-value, less than 0 0.001. And so we can also kind of, if you're interested, we could make a box plot of this. You don't always have to retype everything. The format of t-test and box plots the same. So we could just box plot that. And yeah, it makes sense that these are significantly different from one another. So with that kind of being kind of a, a quick run through for how to do this, you're going to be asked next to uh, make a comparison using R uh, between within the same data set in a very similar way that I've shown you uh, and uh, conduct a t-test. And so as you're doing that, remember kind of these basic steps. You're going to read in your data and then you're going to decide, you know, what form of t-test, what kind of format do I want to conduct my t-test in? Do I want to make objects first? Do I want to... Uh, do kind of the more formula-based approach? And do I want to be more explicit that each one came from the same data set, or do I just want to tell it where the data set is and give it uh, column names? Any of them are fine. Um, I would recommend, personally, trying all three. Uh, make sure that you can do all three. And if you get stuck, skim through this video again or, or look at some of the associated uh, documents that I'm providing you. Um, Part of getting good at this kind of thing is struggling through it and learning as you struggle through it. We've all been there. Um, we all learn um, by kind of fumbling our way through things. And so um, try not to get frustrated uh, and just kind of treat it as kind of uh, an exploratory opportunity.